Hey guys, Gassy TV here with another Path of XL build guide. In this one, we're going to be talking about the Dancing Dervish, as it's called now, and not the Dancing Duo, as that's being removed in, as we're leading going into 3.17 Arch Nemesis. This build is very, very, very specific, but works as a leak starter, as you need to only get very specific items to get it going, meaning you have to play something else prior. And similar to many other builds that has this prerequisite, such as Mage Skeletons, where you are basically playing as an Absolution build, or Mage Skeletons going into Melee Skeletons if you want to do that, before you're able to get the required items. This build has the same approach. You will simply be running with Absolution, and leveling with that using something like Minion Damage, and edit added Cold or added uh, Lightning Damage, switching the added Lightning or Cold into a Control Destruction Rally Mundo Focus in Act 2, and after you're done the library in Act 3, you can switch that to Physical to Lightning, and then Act 4, as you get a 4 link, you want to add a Spell Echo. Uh, that's a generic way of leveling it, and the thing is with this is that you need to get to the point where you're able to purchase a dancing dervish weapon we don't know how common these will be uh, you also need to get yourself a preferably two writhing jar flasks as well before you're able to play this build so those are the fundamental pieces uh, another thing to mention is that the build is going to be an occultist and will therefore also be going into this pumping in a low life approach there's a couple of things you can do to make this easier but ultimately you can actually use something like this which would be the, the low body approach running a solaris lorica chest piece which you can utilize to stay low life despite being on a lower budget before you're able to purchase something like a chevron's wrappings which normally isn't that expensive in the current state of the league how uh, current state of the game even However, like I mentioned, if you feel that you don't have the necessary items to transition to this build, play another build before you get to that point, or just play with Absolution until you have enough currency to, to actually transition into this version. Now, I'm going to show you some gameplay footage on a character that I have in standard, as we got from Scourge League. It is a Chaos Conversion a build with four white tribes. It is slightly of the expensive version. However, I'll be showing you both the POBs for the Chaos Conversion, as well as the low body version using a Cold Conversion. The problem we have at the time of the recording is that we will not be able to see which type of optimal support gems we'll be using inside the weapon uh, until we actually get the patch happening and the release happening tomorrow uh, on Friday in the evening. So we'll not be knowing the support gems or the optimal support gems for the Dancing Dervish until the league actually starts. So without further ado, uh, let me just jump over and show you some gameplay footage. The reason it is mandatory to have a writhing jar flask is because of the tree where we're actually going in for replenishing remedies together with the flask mastery as well as the pantheon to give us flash charges if we haven't used a life flask recently. This actually helps us a lot by making sure we have charges on these flasks consistently and the dancing dervish in the previous version as well as the new version that's coming in 3.17 we will need to start rampage. Now that means I have to explain how rampage works. The TLDR is this rampage does nothing for minions. And how we start it is, as long as you have an item with a modifier that says that you have Rampage, every single killing blow will therefore give you a hidden counter that you will see on the left hand side when it's not hidden. This hidden counter will remain to be hidden until the Rampage actually starts, which is when this weapon is disabled and will then actually summon the two swords to start spinning for you. So this means that we need to get 15 kills. The way we do so is by clicking one of the flasks, See our minions are killing them, wait 2 or 3 seconds, click the other flask, wait 2 or 3 seconds, click the other one. The reason we're waiting for 2 or 3 seconds is to make sure that we don't run out of flask charges as we're building up these 15 kills. Once this is done, killing blows will help as well. Normally you don't have to do this, you can actually rush into a pack, so I'm just going to wait for the rampage to go off because this will disable the weapon. Once the rampage is off, you lose your weapon, so you have to get those 15 kills back again. However, you have an enemy guardian, you have specters and a golem, so normally what you would do is you would actually run into the first pack of enemies, preferably being a white pack of enemies, spam all your flasks, and there you start your rampage without having that downtime of waiting, which is required versus bosses like Cirrus. At this point, this is an occultist build with a blasphemy curse, allowing you to basically have the profane bloom pop and explosions, as you can see, basically carrying the entirety of your clearing. Now, there are changes happening from what you're watching right now into 3.17, which should be making this build better for single targets. However, this build in this budget that you're watching right now has been able to kill things like the Feared or Invitations, Maven, and all of these harder end game fights. Um, so just because it's, the build is able to doesn't mean that it's good at it. 
Um, so back to the rampage topic. We need to make sure that the rampage never stops. So at any given time, you, you see that the timer goes low. That's when you use the flasks at any given time to make sure that you never lose the rampage. Heavy killing blow you do, we'll keep it up. And I normally just click the flask every now and then. It's just whatever. And uh, they will just make sure to keep that rampage stack up and going. Versus unique bosses or uh, mo bosses in general, the swords actually has a hidden modifier. Well, it's not really hidden because it's actually on the actual ability, not on the sword. Uh, that gives them a rampage stack, 25% chance on a hit versus a hitting a unique target. So without using the actual uh, flask, you can see how my rampage is going up. And this is because they're hitting it. Versus the target here, you want to put the curse up and you want to make sure you have your flesh offering. Now, this killing sp speed here was without the flesh offering. And that was only with the assassin's mark. And once your rampage is over, your sword becomes useful again or usable and your weapons goes away. So the play style is very simple. You run through content. That's it. You just run and you keep up the uh, the rampage to make sure that you always stay on par with having rampage running. And that's where the flask comes in. I didn't even use the bottle of faith here because uh, it's a bit of a higher budget than this gameplay footage, as I've said before. And I'll be talking about the PUBs momentarily. Um, so again, we'll show you a couple more maps. I'll run into a pack. I click all the flasks and the rampage is started. And now I'll, all I'm doing is clicking the flask every now and then and just running through the content as everything is dying from the profane bloom explosions as the minions are spinning. The change on the spin is currently supportable by multi-strike, which is actually very, very good. However, it's slightly inflated on the DPS. It's a bit hard to tell how exactly the DPS this build is doing. Um, another thing that I didn't did uh, do in the last boss is using the Wither Totem, which allows me to scale Wither, which I'll talk about more in the skill tree in a bit as well. Uh, other than that, the um, the changes for 3.17 with a channeling ability for Cyclone is that they will use the new version of Cyclone that players are using. This should make them um, have a better uptime versus single target rather than bouncing away from the target quite often. And they will also be in a position where they um, should just generally be uh, having a better uptime. As you see here, the swords are bouncing away from the target rather than actually hitting the target. Which is quite frustrating and hopefully this will not be a problem uh, leading into 3.17. Uh, but other than that, it's, uh, it's a very straightforward build. It's very fun and very satisfying when it comes to clearing uh, and very effective. And it doesn't cost that much currency, even the higher budget it doesn't cost that much. The Ball of Faith is obviously a high budget investment. The um, gear itself is really cheap to get this going outside of the triad grip with the four whites. Now, obviously, those are the big ticket items and they are quite costly. It is able to be self-farmed, uh, but does obviously take some investment and some time to get to, which is why the main focus of the written guide that I'll be accompanying this guide with on the PoE Vault website is going to be focusing on the low budget end, which is going to use four green triad with a low budget approach, simply going cold conversion which means some hefty changes in terms of support gems that you're using and whatnot, including aura changes. So I'm going to do one more map just to show you the gameplay footage a little bit more, and then we'll talk about the PUB and how it looks. Pop in the flask, getting rampage, and now you just run. The build is basically a walking simulator. Click convocation every now and then and just run through the content. I keep forgetting to click the offering ability, which is quite common to forget when you're doing this because it's not automated like many other minion builds. So do keep that in mind, especially on the lower end budget. That is actually quite important that you use your, uh, your offering skill to make sure you have as much damage output as possible. Keep in mind that the Occultist also provides you with the perk of getting killing blows or kills, allows you to regenerate your energy shield, which is one of the main factors to why this build is so good at sustaining the EHP it has while being low life by simply just regenerating the energy shield consistently based on the kills you're doing. And this is a strictly player speed focused and oriented build. Like I mentioned earlier, the build can do end game content with enough investment, but it is definitely not something it is great at. So keep that in mind. This is not something you want to use for the sake of endgame bossing, even if it can do it. So do keep in mind that the low budget version is uh, in this PUB is not the gameplay footage that you saw. The gameplay footage you saw is the chaos conversion. It's not a very big difference, but there is a slight difference to it. So first off, I'm going to talk about the gear. Uh, obviously, we're going to use a Dancing Dervish uh, in the PUB right now. It's a Dancing Duo, which is something we cannot adjust till the PUB is updated, which is happening at the same time as the Lee launches. Other than that, we're going to be using a generic helmet with energy shield and preferably some level of Soccer Dominion gems, but as much energy shield as possible is recommended. 
Uh, Chevron's wrappings is uh, one way of going for it. It's not really that expensive. Like I mentioned before, you could go for something like a Solaris Lorica early on if you want to get it going with low life early. Uh, this one gives you some strength, but it has red color, so be careful with your coloring when you do this. But you can definitely use this, but it doesn't give you any energy shield, but the same effect of covering your energy shield. So that works fine on low budget, but I would recommend just maybe ignoring low budget, skip a couple of hours and just stay with there till you can actually get the Chevron's wrappings or simply just play Absolution till you're able to actually get a Chevron's wrappings. You don't need a six link Chevron's for that matter. Uh, obviously, I'll be going through this once to see the gems and everything so I can dictate if this is something we'll be looking into in a better way when it comes to the written guide. But it all comes down to how effective this will be with the new support gems. Um, so as soon as I'm able to get the written guide up, I will do so. We might wait till after launch uh, because there's some extensive changes that might happen. Like I mentioned earlier, Triad Grip is obviously going to be a four green for cold conversion. This allows to all physical damage that your minions are doing to be converted into uh, cold damage in this case. However, it does impact a lot of pressure when it comes to sockets on your gear. A really good change for 3.17 is the fact that you're actually going to get these socket recipe changes will actually be available through the campaign and not gated in maps. So you have a very easy and early access to basically play around with socket changes. Uh, I can show you that real quick on something like the um, the uh, the shield I have since I don't have any other items right now I, th uh, I can look into. So here we go to the crafting bench, uh, which I have over here. And say I want this uh, item to be uh, three red sockets since it has evasion and, and energy shield. What I would do is I would first color it with the two sockets into red, which costs 25 chromatics. And to get the third socket sorted, I simply do the strategy of using the socket recipes. Two sockets, then three sockets, then two sockets, then three sockets. Rinse, repeat this process till you get the color you want. And on a four link item, you would do the same thing then between four and three sockets. And that's basically the strategy to make this feasible rather than spending thousands upon thousands of chromatic orbs. So that is the socket trick, your socket coloring trick with the benchcraft. That's how we get the four green on the triad group. Other than that, we're using generic boots with high energy shield. If you can get some movement speed, that would be preferable, obviously. Uh, Presses of Chayula is not ne necessarily the best choice, but it is for the, the one you want to go for to enable yourself to apply an additional curse. However, before this, you could actually change your ascendancy, which I'll talk about when we talk about the tree in a bit, but I would go for the Presence of Chayula. This gives you a ton of Chaos Rest because you want to cap that the best you can since you're going to be low life and not have enemies killing you through your energy shield with chaos damage because of the chaos damage being hurting your energy shield with this setup. Do keep in mind that the PUB might not have the capped elemental resistances, and that is very important that you do cap your elemental resistance. Uh, Ring-wise, just generic uh, attributes wherever needed, strength, dex, whatever, and also make sure that there's energy shield on them. Uh, for this build, we are going to be using unset rings, so it's a little bit more pressure and rest on other pieces. Uh, you can use the Darkness of the Throne if you want to, or simply go for Stygian Vice. I chose to go for Stygian Vice so I can smack up a ton of strength in there, together with the Energy Shield. And on the Abyssal Jewels, we're looking for preferably physical damage uh, or cold damage. If you're using physical, you can still use those jewels for when you go Chaos. So that's why you want to prioritize physical damage, as well as Energy Shield. It is crucial to understand that flat physical is very, very strong for this build. Rising Jar Flats, like I mentioned before, you want to have two of those as we're going to sustain our Rampage thanks to them. The Cluster Jewel is very straightforward, like any type of amount of passives for the low budget. In this case, I'm showing a uh, 8 passive with a lower tier flat energy shield uh, per node, and that's basically the only thing that is important. Obviously, you can make this jewel tons better by just smacking an Alk Orb on it, but the most important stat is actually getting energy shield early on so you can survive. For a higher budget, you want to look into getting some increased effective nodes and stuff like that. But early on, just buy the cheapest jewel you can find. Even 8th passive, low item level, doesn't matter. Alteration craft, some uh, some energy shield, augment, regal, and just use whatever you landed on. And that will be actually better than what's shown in the PUB. Uh, other than that, the other jewels are just the energy shield with some uh, decent uh, physical damage modifier from the gas jewels. And there is a quickening covenant with 16% attack speed. These should be pretty cheap to get a hold of. Um, you could go for a Fortress Covenant as well, which you can also put. And keep in mind that these Covenant Jewels should be inside the Large Cluster Jewel, because then the negative impact of these Jewels are not present. Uh, outside of that, the skill tree, I'm going to start with the Ascendancies, like I mentioned before. Thanks to the presence of Chiula Amulet, you can skip Withering Presence. 
by skipping Withering Presence, you can then instead go for Malediction to allow yourself to have an additional curse, as well as the Malediction debuff, which reduces enemy damage done and take increased damage taken for them. Outside of that, we want to start with getting Profane Bloom. After that, I normally go for Vile Bastion for the Energy Shield and avoid being stunned and then Void Beacon. And then I will pick up the Malediction last. However, if I don't have Presence of Chiula, I would go for Profane Bloom and then Void Beacon directly into Withering Presence and then pick up Vile Bastion uh, instead as the last one. The Vile Bastion is your sustain approach because every kill will give you Energy Shield reach in and it's very, very important. Skill tree wise, I would not start with this. I would actually spend a bit of respect for this build when I play this as I level. I would actually start by getting into the point where I would go out of the tree from the side to pick up the life nodes as well as Lord of the Dead into life nodes and then go out to the left side for quick recovery as well as Enduring Bond and level with Absolution. Yes, this build will require some respecting, and that is just the way it has to be. And I would also even consider going into Retribution, Discipline and Training, and going up to Sacrifice, Spiritual Command, and then going out on the left-hand side here to pick up the Life Nodes, as well as Sovereignty. And then after this, I would start following the build tree as it looks. So that's how I would do the skill tree in general when it comes to leveling with it. Uh, just to give you guys a good overview of how that would look tree-wise, it would basically look like this. And I would spec into the left side. Going Retribution, HP nodes, and I would pick up these nodes and can cut straight out from here. So basically, this is the part that I would start with. Going into life, getting Lord of the Dead, Red Cruel Prep, Quick Recovery, uh, Enduring Bond early as well. When you're level 12, you should have this. And then Discipline and Training, um, Retribution, Sacrifice, Spiritual Command. The thing is, you can level with this very simply by uh, going with Freezing Pulse and... Um, Frost Blink and Frost Bomb early on. And then once you have that sorted, you use that to level 10. At level 10, you equip Vitality and Race Zombie. And then at level 12, you start with Absolution. Then you use Absolution with Minion Damage, Add a Coal, Add a Lightning, any of those two. And at Act 2, you change the Add a Coal or Add a Lightning to Control Structures, Early Focus, pick up Skitter Bots and Herald of Purity, and stop leveling Vitality at any time you're having problems with mana. And that like three library quests gives you access to physical lightning support. Act four spell echo that literally covers you into early red tier maps or at least high yellow tier maps. And just for you to get the currency to get the build up and running. The tree, however, when you have done when you're going to do the transition is going to focus a lot on energy shield. You do want to pick up grave intentions to keep your uh, your minions alive. And you want to go out to get Ravenous Horde. And you also want to go to the left-hand side to get the Energy Shield here. Extra Spectre with the increased life. And the Cluster Jewel, if you get one. If you don't have one early, skip this. Go for Fearsome Force for the AUE. And get the Sovereignty with the Random Restoration Efficiency. And going for Faith and Steel for Resistance as an Energy Shield. As well as the nodes here. Do pick up Spiritual Aid. Skip these life nodes early. But do pick up Spiritual Aid. Mainly for the fact that you actually do extra damage with your Profane Bloom Explosions. And then you can start going out to the other side here to get the remaining reservation. But do keep in mind that once you switch, you have to have replenishing remedies with the Flask Mastery to gain a charge for life and mana. Very, very crucial. Uh, Skill-wise, like I mentioned, the support gems, um, I'm not sure which the optimal ones would be. Right now, minion speed is very useful when it comes to actually playing with... Um, with the uh the, for the dancing dervishes for clearing however we not we're not sure if that's going to be needed with the changes so i'm gonna have to say that as a disclaimer you're gonna have to watch pub when the patch gets released and then we'll have to dictate and see which the supporters will be obviously uh, once the league has started i will be making a written guide i will not be making a written guide early because there's too many question marks that needs to be adjusted when the league launches so I'll only have this video out and I'll make sure to link the, the written guide in the descriptions below as soon as the league is started so you can follow that and I'll pin it in the pinned message as well in the comments where we will have optimal support gems. So I'm just going to ignore this right now but do keep in mind that you do want to run cold penetration on the cold uh, version of this and in the triad grip we're using a portal gem if you have one. Other than that it's precision with a lower level. Make sure that you balance this in case you have mana problems. Use a desecrate level one dash for mobility utility wise in your helmet this is why we want to have a level of stock of the gems this is where we put the animate guardian there's a link in the description below for gear set suggestions for animate guardian uh ray specter mini life and feeding frenzy uh to just make sure you have that buffer up and running the 
Auras is a uh, arrogance aura with defiance banner purity of elements, which helps your resistances. Flesh offering in the cold conversion version. And the auras in your chest piece will be determination, assassin mark, vitality, and then you also want to combine uh, blasphemy with frostbite, and you also want to run discipline. This means that you don't need uh, to link your body armor. You only need to link your blasphemy and frostbite. The other support gems or the other gems can be sockets. You only need a two link in your chest piece. Convocation on the Sun Onset Ring and a Golem, whichever you want to use, works fine. Karen is de definitely recommended for this. And that is the cold conversion version of the Dancing Dervish. Again, I will not, I will underline and stress the fact that you cannot do this without the fundamental items, such as the weapon, obviously, the writing jars, and having the aura set properly before this build will feel really good to play. I would not recommend to play it with before that, so I would strongly suggest that you stick to Absolution until you have the currency to get the items needed. And a little side note, you don't need to have links in your weapons, they just, they just need to be socketed. So you don't need any six link in this build. You need a two link chest piece and you just need six sockets on the chest and you need six sockets on the dancing duo. That's it for dancing dervish. When it comes to the high bodied version, this is where you're suddenly going to want to run with a similar tree and um, you want to run with chaos conversion. Now, the problem with the chaos conversion is obviously that you're going to need a four white triad. You can self farm this by doing Alva. This is a bit expensive. So again, you don't you can start with the cold conversion, but this is the high body POB. And again, I can't stress enough the factor that this is impossible for us to tell how good this will be in terms of numbers till we actually see the changes coming in with 3.17. Other than that, the tree is pretty much the same. The gear is pretty much the same. It's just higher numerical values. Just better energy shield across the board. You can get delve rings with minion damage or influence rings. Um, other than that, everything is the same. Better jewels with better physical damage, with better energy shield and attack speed. It's just better numerical values across the board. And the tree is almost the same, except for the fact that we are now running with the stat increasers. Because we have the, we have the possibility to take that. We're also picking up with the wither mastery and wither effect. Because the thing is that's really cool with chaos damage is that withered applies six percent damage taken per stack up to 15 stacks and if you are applying the wither yourself you can get 55 percent increased scaling in this which means that instead of having 90 percent increased chaos damage taken that is multiplied by 1.55 providing 139 damage taken increase for chaos damage sources crazy good which is why in the skill setup, we are making sure that we're running a spell totem wither setup, and we're also going to use spirit offering instead of flesh offering. Other than that, the since we no longer need any specific colors in our gloves, we're able to run the similar setup with the purity of elements and defiance banner. We're able to run the precision, and we're going to be a blasphemy curse with a despair instead of frostbite, convocation, carrying golem, yada yada. It's basically the same approach. However, like I mentioned before, the support gems that we're using inside the Dancing Duo or Dancing Dervish, we don't know which ones would be best till we actually see what's happening in 3.17. So I'll be making sure to keep this updated with a pin message again in the description and in the comments when I've made the written version for this. But for now, this is all I can actually give you. Um, but this build is really, really good. I do want to make a give, uh, give a pretty big shout out to Bella Bong, who is the um, one of the main people in the community who's actually made a guide for this. Um, on the PoE forums, Bella Bong has been a uh, part of our community for a while now, and I talk to her quite a lot when it comes to this build. And I've taken some of the inspiration from her high budget into my high budget, and our low budget versions kind of differs quite a lot. But other than that, I think that both of our versions are really good. So if you don't know who she is, definitely check her out. She has some really good Dancing Dervish content as well on the PoE forums. So do check her out with that. Uh, last thing I do want to mention is obviously you want to use cell toad for energy shield region but the cluster jewel on the high body version again you want to have energy shield but on the high body version you want to have increased effect of nodes on the on the jewel uh, resistance helps a lot but ma mainly the damage comes from the attack speed from this as well and that's basically the only other change you could run a small cluster jewel with again some stats but mainly it's going to be energy shield and increased effect to again further scale that energy shield pool to up to 7.3 in game right now i have 7.7 thousand almost and there's still room for improving on this build so before i finish this video and tell you guys to hit the like button subscribe for more content and yada you know all of that yada shit i will say this this build is a clear speed build and it does so very well it's very comfortable it's extremely enjoyable to play however 
you have to keep in mind that it can do endgame bosses, but just because it can do them doesn't mean it's designed for it. So if you decide to play this, keep in mind that this it's there to clear, not to do endgame bosses. So don't be disappointed if you're struggling with bosses with a build. That's all I have for you with this video. I'll make sure the PUBs that I have is linked in the descriptions. But again, I will make sure to make sure that the, the, everything is updated with a written guide as soon as we have all the information so I can adjust it accordingly to make sure you have everything 100% accurate in the written guide as well as in the descriptions. So till then, until next video, hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe and keep rocking.